Do you like stories? I hope so, because my goal today is to tell a couple of stories so you can get to know a little bit about who I am and what makes me tick. By the end of this video, you should have a little bit better idea of that. In the meantime, I hope that I'll add a little bit of value to your life. Also, you're going to want to stick around to the end because I'm going to share a story about how a interaction I had with the police changed my life. So stick around for the end to hear about that story. It's a good one. So the first thing that you should know is, is that I'm doing this video as part of a challenge. A group of business people are doing a four week challenge. And the first challenge is to do a little intro video so we can get to know each other a little bit. So my name is Chris Vogt. I'm a commercial real estate agent, a business broker, and my personal branding is I am your professional connector. So there's three things that I want to talk about today. I want to talk a little bit about my health, artificial intelligence, and social media. And those things will help you understand me a little bit better. Let's start with a scary story. I went to a conference in Dallas, Texas, August of 21. There was about 5,000 real estate agents at this international real estate conference. And when I came home, I got home uh, from the long flight and I felt a little tickle in my throat the night before while I was sleeping. I woke up and had to gargle a little bit. I got home and I was feeling pretty good. I went shopping, went out to dinner, got home, put all the stuff away, went up to Netflix. And just as I was getting onto my bed to go watch some Netflix, it hit me like a ton of bricks. That's right. COVID, the Delta variant. I fought it for a, almost a week before my daughter, who is an ICU nurse, said that I had to hang up the phone and call 911 and get an ambulance immediately. She said, don't do anything else. As soon as you hang up the phone, the next thing you do is call 911 and get that ambulance there, Dad. So I did. And I ended up in the hospital that evening for 27 days. The doctors would come in in the morning and do, during the rounds, and they'd say, oh, Chris, you're still alive. And I thought they were just being friendly. But when I got out of the hospital, my doctor who took care of me afterwards said, no, Chris, they were actually surprised that you were still alive. So I asked my doctor, I said, you know, of all the post-COVID patients that you're taking care of, how do I rate on that spectrum from good to worst? And he said, Chris, you are the worst. I have not had any patients that survived that are in as bad a shape as you were. So that was September of 2021. And I spent a lot of time these last months recovering from that. And I'm still recovering from that. I'm not quite 100%, but I'm working my way in the right direction. That's just a little bit about my health. When you come close to death, it helps you set your priorities straight. Mine has certainly been realigned. And I'm working on keeping my priorities straight at this point in my life. Artificial intelligence is something that fascinates me. Even when I was in high school, that was a long time ago, back in the 1970s, I took a correspondence course on psychology when I was a freshman because they didn't offer psychology at the school I went to in the country. And so I've really been fascinated with the brain, how it works, how people interact with each other, the whole psychology thing. And it's fascinating now that computers are being fed information and they're learning in the ways that many people believe are the way that humans learn. A fascinating time to live in. And like it or not, AI is not going away. It's here. And I see AI as a tool. It's something that you can choose to use it for good or you can use it for evil. Well, I'm planning to use it for good. I also see AI as a great equalizer. So some of the limitations that I'm experiencing, I'm working to use AI to overcome them and make me even better and give me an edge over my competitors. 
So I see AI as something that even though it can be used for bad, then I'm planning to use it for good. Social media. So in 2023, social media is one of the things that I'm really working on learning how to do social media better as someone whose age starts with a six when you get up at that what I like to call the silver circle society as you can see I've got a little bit of silver in my hair social media may not be one of the things that a lot of us in our age group are really comfortable with but I'm making an attempt to really get with it so on Valentine's Day I launched my YouTube channel, Valentine's Day, 2023. No, I did not do anything romantic. I did it on artificial intelligence, actually. That was, you know, a couple of months ago. So we got uh, March, April, we're into May now. So we're coming up on three months. And when I looked earlier today, my YouTube channel was up to 106. Yes, 106 subscribers. A lot of people are like, wow, Chris, that's actually pretty good for only three months. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, being alive, this is really difficult. So I was looking at my stats as of earlier today, I had 1,250 views of my videos and 123 views in the prior 20 or I mean, 48 hours. That's actually pretty interesting that in the last 48 hours, I had almost 10% of my views. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. And so not today, but in the future, I'll be doing a video on how I'm building my social media presence and growing that. I also launched a LinkedIn newsletter that is doing much better than I ever would have expected. I launched the newsletter on March 13th, almost a month after I launched my YouTube channel earlier today. I saw that I had 1,543 subscribers. So I'm pretty excited about that. And so I've only posted a few articles, like six or so, I think. And I posted like eight or nine videos on YouTube. So we'll be putting this up on YouTube and also highlighting it on the LinkedIn channel. So if you're watching it on one or the other, I'll be posting links below. So you can catch it, catch up on me on my other social media presence. My newsletter is called Our Business Edge. The whole purpose of the uh, newsletter is to share tricks, tips, and hacks to being a better business ninja. So I've spent most of my life in business ever since I was a little kid. I ran small businesses from our house. Even while I was in college, I ran multiple businesses out of my dorm room, and I've been an entrepreneur for all of my life. So there's three quick things I want to share with you that set me apart. And don't worry, I'm getting to that story, how my run-in with the law changed my life. It's still coming. So the first thing that is really impacted on my life is my best friend and my wife, Wendy. And just recently, on March 26th of this year, we were blessed to be able to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. So I like to say that between us, we've been married to each other for over 80 years. Sometimes it seems like 80 years, but more frequently, recently, it seemed more like 20 years. And I can honestly say that my wife and I are more in love with each other now than we have been ever before in our marriage. The next thing it kind of sets me apart and people find interesting, is my very first listing as a real estate agent. I got my license in September, or actually August 31st of 2017, and I joined my brokerage, or the sister brokerage, on September 1st of 2017. And I actually was focused on other things than listing when I first started, when I was doing residential, but then I started doing commercial. And in the summer of 2019, I got my first listing. And it was a referral that came to me from a commercial broker in New York City who referred me to a commercial real estate attorney in Los Angeles who then vetted me and connected me with his client in the North San Francisco Bay Area. To make a long story short, 
my first listing was $256 million. That's something that was fascinating. And it really changed the trajectory of my real estate career, getting that listing. And then the last thing, I'm going to tell you the story about how I did a year of forensic accounting for a client. And that year of forensic accounting resulted in me putting together a team, which, and I was the engineer and we executed a hostile takeover in the Silicon Valley. Our team went in on a Monday afternoon at 445, accompanied by two plainclothes police officers carrying handcuffs and handguns. After um, what in hindsight was actually a pretty brief period of time, we were able to affect the takeover. And the next morning I was introduced to the staff of the company as the new COO and CFO. And so I ran that company for almost five years until I retired when I was 42 years of age. So that's just a little bit about me, Chris Vogt, your professional connector, commercial real estate agent, and business broker. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed the stories and that you found a little bit of value for your life today. Have a great day and we'll see you on social media and hopefully meet you in real life. Take care.